Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we'll be looking at section 2.2 on uh, separable equations. So the basic format that we're looking for to see if something is separable is if we have a first derivative equal to uh, the product of some functions involving either x or y. So the idea here is basically that uh, we can split it up, have our x's on one side, y's on the other. So basically this can transform then into 1 over h of y times dy is worth g of x times dx. And then we can integrate both sides to sort of solve the differential equation. So we'll start with a relatively short one. We'll do dy dx is x squared y cubed. So we're looking to solve that differential differential equation. So again, I want y's on one side, x's on the other, so I'll divide both sides by y cubed. So we have 1 over y cubed dy, and multiply both sides by dx, so equals x squared times dx. So then we'll integrate both sides, so integral of y to the negative third times dy is worth integral of x squared times dx. So we'll start with the antiderivative of y to the negative third. We have a negative second, so I need a negative one half out there. It's worth, <coughs> excuse me, one third of x cubed plus some arbitrary constant. So there's one example of sort of a, a shorter differential equation. So we have this implicitly solved, uh, that negative one over two y squared is worth a third of x cubed plus some arbitrary constant. So our next one, uh, a little bit longer, but same ideas. We want to get all of our x's to one side, y's to the other side. So we're looking to solve this time. Uh, we have e to the x times y times dy dx is worth e to the minus y plus e to the negative 2x minus y. So let me start with just uh, a little bit of work on that right hand side. Uh, we can also multiply both sides by dx. So at the moment we have e to the x times y dy is worth 1 over e to the y times dx plus 1 over e to the 2x times 1 over e to the y, also times dx. So we multiplied both sides by dx. I got rid of the negative exponents. And it looks like uh, if I multiply both sides by e to the y, that will get the y's off of the right-hand side. So we'll do that. If I do it to one side, I, of course, want to do it to the other side as well. Uh, I also want to... Uh, divide both sides by e to the x, that will get the x's off of the left hand side. So a little bit of cleanup, the e to the x's drop here, so we have y e to the y times dy is worth, let's see, distributing the e to the y's drop, so I have e to the negative x dx, uh, e to the y's drop, uh, plus e to the negative 3x times dx as well. So from here, uh, we have a little bit of 
uh, integration by parts to work with from there. So we'll just continue this in the next column. We're going to let u equal y, dv will equal e to the y times dy. So du then is equal to dy, and v is e to the y. We choose the c to be 0 when we're doing integration by parts. So our left hand side turns into uh, u times v, so y e to the y minus integral of v times du. So e to the y times dy. And that's worth. On the right hand side, we can just do the antiderivative here. So minus e to the minus x. And we'll also have a an e to the negative 3x. I don't see a negative 3 up front, so I will need a negative 1 third to cancel that with, and plus some arbitrary constant, so plus c. My apologies for it being kind of up there. I just sort of ran into a little hole there. So integral of e to the y is e to the y. Uh, we already have our sort of plus c accounted for here. So y e to the y minus e to the y is worth minus e to the minus x minus one third e to the negative 3x plus c. Uh, and you can either stop there or uh, I think your author typically would factor the left hand side. Um, so you can also call it e to the y times y minus 1 is equal to same right hand side. Uh, I'm okay with either of these last two versions. So either of those last two are fine for being implicit solutions of the differential equation. So we still get to play around with some of the skills that we picked up in Calc 2. Uh, for example, the integration by parts that uh, hasn't gone away. That's still a very handy tool in DiffEQ. Alright, so the next one uh, we are going to look at an explicit solution that it, uh, will also have a particular solution. So in other words, they're going to give us some initial conditions. Uh, explicit solution just means that we're going to be able to get the y by itself. Particular solution means uh, we don't have just uh, an infinitely large family of solutions. Uh, we're told one of the ordered pairs that will give us which solution. All right, so our equation 60y is worth 2x plus 1 by y squared minus 2y minus 8. Close it up. Multiply by dx. Uh, we're also told that y of 0 is worth 10. So again, this is kind of a notation that I start introducing uh, generally in differential equations. They don't use that very often in uh, algebra. They typically would name the function. Okay, so left-hand side looks good. Right-hand side, I do have some y's on there. So we'll just go ahead and divide both sides by that trinomial. So we get 60y over y squared minus 2y minus 8 is worth 2x plus 1 quantity times dx. So the integral of uh, the right side doesn't uh, hopefully look very intimidating to you. Uh, on the left side here, uh, we get to play around with uh, partial fractions as well, another handy skill from your Calc 2 days. So the denominator is factorable over the integers. We have y minus 4 by y plus 2. 
and that's still worth 2x plus 1 quantity times dx and we will integrate that side as well. So now we want to uh, sort of split this apart. So we're going to do a little work with the left hand side. So I'm going to let 6 over y minus 4 by y plus 2 equal a over y minus 4 plus b over y plus 2. So we have uh, unique factors here so we don't have to worry about a square and then a first power anything like that and each of these were just uh, again linear factors so uh, we didn't have irreducible quadratics we didn't have to worry about an ax plus b over an irreducible quadratic. Okay, so we clear the fraction, multiply both sides by the LCD, and we get 6 is worth a by y plus 2 plus b by y minus 4. And then we have another let line, so we let y equal 4. That will drop the b term out, so 6 is worth a by 6 plus b by 0. So a is worth 1, b times 0 is 0. 6a plus 0 is worth 6, a would be worth 1. Then we can let uh, y equal a negative 2. So 6 is worth a times 0 plus b times negative 6, so negative 2 minus 4. So 6 is worth negative 6b, so b is a negative 1. So now we have uh, a simpler integral on the left hand side. We have integral of a over y minus 4, so 1 over y minus 4 plus b over y plus 2, so plus a negative 1 or simply minus 1 over y plus 2 times dy. That looks much easier to work with than what we had before. We still have the same right-hand side, integral of 2x plus 1 quantity times dx. Okay, so then the antiderivative of y minus 4 is natural log of absolute value of y minus 4. Antiderivative of the reciprocal of y plus 2 is also a natural log, absolute value of y plus 2. Right hand side, antiderivative of 2x is x squared, antiderivative of 1 is x, and we'll throw our plus c on that side. So if we just wanted an implicit solution, this would be workable as an implicit solution. Unfortunately, they wanted both an explicit solution and then they later wanted us to uh, take that explicit solution and get a particular solution based on having the ordered pair 0, 10 on the function. Uh, so we do have a little bit more work to go on this one. Uh, so properties of logarithms. Uh, log of a minus log of b is the log of quantity a over b. So left side is now natural log of 1 over y minus 4. Oh, my apologies, not 1 over. Natural log of just y minus 4 over y plus 2 is worth x squared plus x plus c. If I'd like to get that y out of there, we can go from logarithmic notation back to exponential notation. So there we're taking a, a little um, page from our college algebra book. So base to the other side is equal to the argument. So e to the x squared plus x plus c is worth y minus 4 over y plus 2. Now we have a plus c in the exponent of an e to a power. So remember when we're adding in the exponent that really means we were multiplying with the same base. Uh, 
So I can call this e to the x squared plus x times e to the c. So our shortcut would be we would keep the common base and add those exponents up. Well, e to the c is going to be just a constant. Uh, so we can call that, uh, typically they would call it uh, c with a subscript. So we'll say c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x is y minus 4 over y plus 2. So then we can clear our fractions and rearrange it to get the y by itself. So y plus 2 times c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x is worth y minus 4. We can go ahead and distribute. So we have y c2 e to the x squared plus x plus 2 c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x is worth y minus 4. So then I want everything with my y's on one side, everything without y's on the other side. So I have y minus y c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x is worth 2 c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x plus 4. Next up, I'll do a little bit of factoring. So I have y times 1 minus c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x. It's worth 2 c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x and a separate plus 4. My apologies, that plus 4 is a little hard to read there. All right, so let me uh, go ahead and flip it there. So I'm going to bring along what we had on the previous page, just so we don't lose track of it. So we factored out a y, then we had 1 minus c2 e to the x squared plus x. It's worth 2 c2 e to the x squared plus x and a plus 4 that I was having a little trouble fitting on there. All right, so now we can get the y by itself. So y is 2 c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x and a plus 4, not in the exponent, over 1 minus c sub 2 e to the x squared plus x. So this is a an explicit solution at this stage. Way back when, let's see, way back at the bottom of this stage is where we had our first implicit solution. Now we'll take into account what they told us we wanted the initial condition to be y of 0 is worth 10. That will take us from the explicit solution to the particular solution. So 10 is equal to 2c sub 2 e to the x is 0, so 0 squared plus 0 plus 4 over 1 minus, we don't know what c sub 2 is yet, uh, e to the 0 squared plus 0. Well, 0 squared plus 0 is still 0. e to the 0 is just a 1. So now we have 10 is worth 2 c sub 2 plus 4 over 1 minus c sub 2. So we can clear the fraction and 10 minus 10 c sub 2 it's worth 2 c sub 2 plus 4. So we just multiply both sides by 1 minus c sub 2. So 12 c sub 2 
uh, is worth 6, so C sub 2 is a half. So we can plug that information in to get our particular solution. So y equals 2 times a half e to the x squared plus x plus 4 over 1 minus a half e to the x squared plus x. And the only little cleanup we have here that we would have to do is we can uh, do the 2 by a half. So y is e to the x squared plus x plus 4 over 1 minus half e to the x squared plus x. You might see it that way. They may also uh, multiply top and bottom by 2 to just uh, clear that out. Uh, so they may give you y equals 2 e to the x squared plus x plus 8 over 2 minus e to the x squared plus x. Um, either one of those are okay. Um, they both would give us uh, the same real number uh, solution. So we have uh, when we plug in any, uh, any value of x. So there is our explicit, our uh, both explicit and particular solutions. Okay, so from uh, 2.2, I would recommend 1 to 27 on the odds. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Otherwise, I will see you next time.